Hey friends, how are you today? I'm so excited that you are doing this project. I wish I could see you in person. I really, really miss you. I've seen a couple of you out and about, um, but for the rest of you, hello and I miss you. We are going to be making a project today out of old magazines. So we're going to be recycling and you're going to have the opportunity to make two different things. You can choose which one you would like to make. So I am going to flip the camera around, so close your eyes so you don't get dizzy, and then we will get started. All right, so today we are going to make, and it'll probably take me a second to adjust this camera. Today we are going to make a bowl out of old magazines, and as you can see, I've got my bowl storing all of my fun little doodads that I like to keep around, like my duck foot from... Mrs. Jeffrey, thank you Mrs. Jeffrey, and my finger foot. Um, we are also going to be making um, a can that you can use to hold pencils or I'm using it to hold my paintbrushes or whatever you would like. So we're going to do these two projects today. Whoops, I guess I had a dice in there. And let's get started. So I'll put those off to the side. So what you will need for this project, you will need a cereal box that you can cut. You will need a magazine. If you are going to do the pencil holder, you'll need a can. You will need um, some tacky glue. If you don't have tacky glue, then you can use Elmer's glue and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. You will need some tape and you will need scissors. I'm trying to fit everything in here and you will need a glue stick and you will need a skewer if you don't have a skewer this little uh, skinny wooden stick when we get to the point where you need to use this i'll show you something else that you can do okay so let's get started let me put everything off to the side here the first thing that you will need to do is sorry you will need to a lot of stuff and not enough space you will need to cut your cereal box now I want you to cut your cereal box right on the fold line and there's a good reason for that which I will show you maybe at the end of this video if we have time okay and then save this part okay this part like this save that for later we'll use that later and then you're going to cut a strip about uh, three quarters of an inch wide and just as long as your cereal box it does not need to be perfect it's going to look something like this okay and the reason that we need this is that we are going to use this to help make our strips we need to make a whole bunch of strips that look like this in order to make our bowl. I'm going to empty out our bowl so that you can get a good look at it. Okay, so we're going to need a whole bunch of these strips and in order to make sure we make them all the same size, we'll use this piece of cardboard. Okay, so I'm going to put my strips over here and I pulled out a couple of pages. What you need to do is look through a magazine and you will need a lot of pages depending on how big you want to make your bowl. You'll need quite a few pages. You want to pick pages that are colorful how cute is this? I could not resist. It says, where are you going? Oh, so cute. Um, so tear out some pages that are colorful and um, you don't need to worry if the edge is a little bit rough. It doesn't matter at all. So tear out a bunch of pages, put them in a pile. So to get started, let me scoot this out of the way. What you'll need to do is decide which side you're going to use. So for this one, it doesn't really matter. They're both pretty colorful. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is turn it this way so this part will be the part that shows the most. And I'm going to take my strip. And what you need to do is just fold it over. You can see my paper is diagonal like this. And I'm folding the strip right, the piece of paper right over the edge of my strip. My cardboard strip okay and I'm gonna roll it and just press it down and roll it and press it down till I get a couple of them done and then I'm gonna pull this out because I don't it's if you leave it in it's hard to pull out so now I have a good size and I'm just going to 
roll these and I keep pressing them down because we do want them to be flat. Okay, so press them down and when you get to the end, you will need to just tape that. And as a side note, I forgot to tell you, it's a good idea to have some tape already, already cut and just at the edge of your table or whatever, just because it's a little hard to hold that and um, cut your tape. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna run out of tape. I've made a lot of these. Ugh. Okay. All right, put that over there. And let's do another one, just to make sure you understand how to do it. So you want the colorful side on the back. Okay, you don't wanna be seeing the colorful side when you're rolling. So take your cardboard strip that you measured out, and not measured perfectly, but just measured out so it looks like this, okay? About three quarters. You don't want it to be too skinny, otherwise your coils, or these are gonna turn out way too skinny, and you don't want it to be too fat. So I found three quarters of an inch is just about right. Okay, so you're at a diagonal. Flip the corner over so you have that triangle showing, and then you'll roll it and press roll and press about twice, then pull it out, and then just continue, okay? Now, this is a great thing to do while you are just watching TV. If you are bored, um, you can do this while you're watching TV. In fact, as I made a bajillion of these while I was watching TV, and my daughter was the tape terror, so she tore all the tape. Okay, so you just need to make a whole bunch of these. So I have made a whole bunch of these strips, okay? Now the next step is you need to start making a coil using these strips. So a coil is gonna look like this, okay? So what you're gonna do is take one of your strips and at one end of this strip, you're gonna start rolling it, okay? So I'm just gonna flip it over, and I hope you can see this. I'm just rolling it. Just roll it. The first one is the hardest one to do. Okay, so once you get a few rolls done, it'll look like this. Keep going. And for this first one, you'll want to kind of press that. The new, the um, magazine will start kind of getting a little, um, see it's kind of like not flat. So just press it, flatten it out, okay? And once you get it started, then you can just roll it in your hand like this. You want to press it, you want to pull it pretty tightly. Okay, and if you're rolling, and your magazine starts to not be flat, just put it, just flatten it down. Okay, so this is the inside coil and you have this little extra part here. You're gonna take another strip and just slide that in. And just to make sure you saw that, okay, I'm just gonna slide this in and I'm going to tape it and then I'm going to keep rolling. Okay, now if that happens and you have a little piece that's sticking up, it's sticking out of my coil, no worries. When you roll, just push it down, stuff it in there. Okay, so I'm rolling this one, and this does get a little easier. Just make sure that you are rolling nice and tight. You should, if you can see this coil, it's nice and tight. Okay, so keep going, and once you get to the end here, you are ready for another um, strip that you made. So let's talk about a few troubleshooting issues. If your strips don't fit together exactly, okay, let's say that this doesn't wanna slide in here, one thing you can do is just trim the edge a little bit, and then it should fit right in. Okay. And there we go. Okay, then we'll tape it up and keep going. Another thing that could happen, you're pulling it nice and hard and it comes untaped like that. No big deal. 
just stick it back in. You might have to add another piece of tape there just to make it a little sturdier. And keep rolling. Okay, so if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm kind of pressing with this hand and I'm holding the coil with this hand. Okay, and go like this every once in a while just to make sure your coil is nice and flat. Okay, and then you're ready for your next one. Now, what if, oh no, that happens. Okay, don't give up, it might happen. All you need to do is go back to where you started and re-roll it. Now, this happens sometimes. You're working on something and it falls apart or you, you know something happens and you have to start over again. That is okay. That just teaches you not to give up. That's called persistence. And it's a really important skill. It'll help you in school and it'll help you in life in general. So if that happens, don't give up. Just start again. And the more you do this, the easier it will get. I almost dropped it again there. Okay, so don't give up. It's really, once you get going on it, it's actually pretty fun. And I think that the bowls that you make are really, really cool. Okay, so here's our coil. And you, of course, if you wanna make a bowl that would be like this size, this, you're gonna need a whole lot more strips, right? Because however big your coil is, that's how big this part of your bowl is going to be. So when I made this bowl, my coil was the size of the outside of the bowl. So this would be like a teensy weensy bowl. Okay, so you will keep going, make your coils, and if you have to stop, there are a couple things you can do. You can put a rubber band around it just to hold it in place while you go eat dinner or take a break, um, or you could just tape it and then slit it. So that's how you make the coils. Now, once you are finished making your coils, then you will need to, I'm gonna think I'm just gonna put one more on here. Okay, so put that in there and am I almost running out tape? Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna make one more coil and, oops, and that happens. I'm glad that it happened to me so that you can see it happens even though I've made a whole lot of these. I'm probably at the end of my tape and it's not very sticky is another problem. All right, so I'm gonna make this last one and then this is gonna be, I'm just gonna make a tiny bowl just to show you how to turn it into a bowl. Okay, once you're finished, you will tape it shut and don't worry about um, over taping it because um, we will put Mod Podge on it and once you put Mod Podge on it, it's really, it's really sturdy. So to make the bowl, what you will do, okay, so I've got this coil that's much, much bigger. To make the bowl, what you will do is starting in the middle, you'll very, very gently push it out, okay? So you can see that I started in the middle down where that center coil is Ladies and gentlemen, do this very gently and carefully because if you push it too hard, whoop, the whole thing's gonna explode, okay? So I'm just very gently doing this. I think you can see what I'm doing. It's almost like if you were making a pinch pot and you were just really carefully going around and pushing it out, okay? Now, when you wanna make sure that your bottom is flat, okay? and kind of make sure it's sort of even, or not, if you don't want it to be even, that's okay too, right? And so there is another bowl. And what I would do is just kind of push it down there just to make sure that it will sit sturdy, okay? All right, so that's how you make one of these bowls. Now, a couple of things. This last strip, when you get your bowl, Okay, so I'm gonna push that down. 
So when you get your, you're ready, you say, okay, this is how big I want the top of my bowl to be, because your bowl will be as big as your last coil that you made. Put your favorite strip around there. So save your favorite one for last, because that's the one that's gonna be showing, okay? All right, so here's a bowl that I've made, and here's this big coil. What I'm gonna do here is actually, I wanna make a lid for this. Bowl. I'm going to make a lid for this bowl. I'm going to use that coil and I'm really just turning it into a bowl. Okay, but I'm just not making it as deep. Okay, you can see that this bowl is deeper than this one. Okay, so instead of making it really deep, I'm just going to kind of go like that, just pushing it out, and then it'll be a lid for my bowl. And I kind of want it to have a little top on it so um, you could put a button there or anything that you want but I have about a jillion of these little tiny coils made so I'm gonna use that and that's gonna be how you lift the lid off okay so the next thing you need to do once you get your bowl just the size and shape you want it to be and your lid if you would like to do a lid just the size and shape you want it to be. Let me just turn these sideways so you can see them. Then, and this is how they fit together. Okay. Boop. Okay, then you need to use your Mod Podge. So I've actually seen Mod Podge at the dollar store, every teacher's favorite store in the whole world. So um, you can get it there, you can get it at Walmart, or if you don't have Mod Podge, I'll, I'll show you what to do. So you will want to put your um, bowl on something. This is just a plastic lid. And put your Mod Podge on in the same direction as your bowl goes so that that Mod Podge can get down into the um, cracks there and make sure that your bowl stays nice and sturdy. Okay, so do the outside, then let it dry a little bit. It doesn't take very long to dry. It'll probably be dry by the time we're done with this video. Do the outside, let it dry a little bit, and then go ahead and do the inside. If you don't have a plastic um, lid or something to put on this, and make sure you do this edge too. Just put it under some wax paper just so it doesn't stick to whatever it is you're painting it on. Because you, as you can see, it's really hard to paint it or paint this Mod Podge on without getting it on the surface of whatever your bowl is on, okay? All right, so there's the bottom of our bowl. Now, for the top of the bowl, I'm gonna do the same thing. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm also going to show you about gluing that lid on. Okay, so remember, you're going to be going in the direction of your coils so that your Mod Podge can get down in those cracks there and keep it really sturdy. You really probably only need one coat. And you know, there's two kinds of Mod Podge you can buy. There's the matte finish, which is not shiny and then the gloss finish which is shiny and then there well I guess there's three because there's also a satin finish which is sort of in between so if you want it to be shiny you want to get the gloss okay and I'm going to save this because if I try to do it now I'm going to get Mod Podge everywhere now if you don't have Mod Podge what you will need to do is get yourself a little bit of regular white glue and a little bowl and put some glue in it Oop, open the cap first remember we listen to it breathe if it's clogged ah, there we go okay so sorry I'm almost out of glue too I'm in big trouble here I need to restock my art supplies okay, let's scoot everybody out of the way here all right so give yourself some glue and just a little, oops, just a little bit of water. I'm just gonna use the same paintbrush, okay? Just a little bit of water. That 
should be enough. Just to water it down a little bit, mix it up, and then you can use that and it'll be just fine. So if you don't have Mod Podge, never fear, okay? So it needs to be a consistency is sort of about like that, okay? So I could even just paint this with that, paint the lid with that, and it'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna let that dry while we talk about how to make this project. So for this project, you are gonna be making a whole bunch of these uh, straws out of magazines, okay? So this is where you'll need the skewer if you have a skewer. It really does make it a little bit easier, but if you don't have a skewer, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so I'm going to take a magazine page and just like with the other one, oh, here's some more tape, that's lucky. Um, the side that you want showing should be on the bottom. So I kind of like this bright green, so I'm gonna put that on the bottom. You start it um, at a diagonal, just like with the other one. And you need your glue stick. And you are gonna put glue, it doesn't have to cover the whole thing, but you want to put some glue, make sort of like an X or a line there, okay. So you have some glue. Then take your skewer, and you need to roll this up on your skewer. So you're just gonna tuck it under there and start rolling. Okay. And the reason we want the glue there is because you are going to need to trim these. Oops. Oh, if that happens, no biggie. Just keep rolling. Or if it really is bumpy, you may you might have to start again. I think I'll start again. And that happens. You know what? It's a okay. So we're going to put that one down. Let's get another one. Let's see if you remember the steps. Decide which side you want to show. I think I want this side to show because it's got that on it. And put your glue on. Put it right on the edges. And then a little bit in the middle. Okay. And then start rolling. So I'm gonna make sure you can see. Sometimes this happens, I will be honest with you, sometimes it doesn't want to roll around the stick and you just kind of have to angle it a little bit and then it'll start rolling, okay? So you're gonna roll it and one side will probably be a little bit bigger than the other side and that's definitely okay. Once you get towards the end, if your skewer starts to disappear inside your paper, pull it out a little bit so that you'll be able to pull it out when you're done. Now, when you get to this last area, you're gonna wanna put some glue there so that it stays closed. Now, if you have a little problem with the end popping off like that, just take a little piece of tape. Oh, that's not my new one, is it? Remember I said, yay, I found tape. Now I don't know where I put it. Okay, so just take a little piece of tape and there you go, okay? Then pull out your skewer and put it in your pile. And take another piece of paper and do the same thing. I actually really like this black and white, so I'm, I'm gonna roll it on this side because I want to see that black and white. So pick your paper, put the side you like on the bottom, put your glue around it, and start rolling, okay? Now, if you don't have a skewer, um, you can just roll this just by starting a little tiny roll and rolling it. It's just a lot easier if you have a skewer. Um, you could use a really skinny pencil if you have a really skinny pencil. 
um, or something else that would be skinny, long and skinny, maybe a straw or something like that you could use. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. So in these skewers, you can buy like a hundred of them at Walmart for I think 99 cents or something like that. Okay, so now what you don't probably want to do is do some with a skewer and some without because when you do them without a skewer, the width is not the same. You'll see that these ones are wider that I did without the skewer than these just because the skewer you can you can press it. Okay. All right. So you make yourself a bunch of those. Then you get your can. Let's see, where did, here's my can. And what I did for this one, I'm going to take my paintbrushes out. What I did for this one is I measured them and made them all about the same length. I think for this next one, I want to make it a little bit different. So I'm going to have them be different lengths. So when you are ready to glue them on, the first thing you need to do is cut off the end because your end is always a little pointy. So cut off the end. Then you need to figure out what the minimum length is going to be. So just hold it up to your can. The minimum length is going to be right there. But I want mine to be a little bit taller. So I'm going to cut it right here. Now if you cut it and it starts to unravel a little bit, no biggie. You can put some glue on it. Um, I would tape it except I'm running out of tape. So I'm just going to put the glue on and I'm going to use this to determine how long I want to make the rest of these. Okay, so I will cut the end off and I can make it the same length or I can make it a little bit longer. I don't want to make it shorter. Okay, I measured and I know that, oh, and you need, you definitely need big scissors for this, by the way, because that gets pretty thick. Okay, so you can make it the same length or you can make it a little taller. Um, you can make it a little bit shorter if you wanted to, but not much shorter. Okay, um, or if you want them to all be the same length, then you can measure and just cut them all so they're the same length. Okay, I'm going to make this one just a little shorter. Okay, and then I've got these two left over. So I know that it could be taller but not shorter, taller but not shorter. So I can use all of those. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and measure so I know that it can be right about there. And, ooh, I like that color. And always make sure that your end is not pointy. I'm kind of hurrying here because I know that my time is going to run out soon. Okay, so cut off that pointy end. Measure about how long you want it. Okay, and there we go. So I have enough to get started here. Okay, so turn your can sideways and honestly the tacky glue does work better for this um, than Elmer's glue and the tacky glue you can also get at the dollar store or at Walmart. So put a strip of glue and just lay your, your coil down. Now if your coil is starting to unravel a tad then put that side down because the glue will hold it okay so if this was starting to unravel a little bit I would put that side down now try to make some decisions about how you put these on you know give your make a little contrast um, use a variety of colors or you could even do like a pattern you could do black and white um, or whatever pages, you know, whatever magazine you cut out, maybe you have certain, um, you know, colors that you want to use, okay? All right, and that's all you do. You just put that, keep putting those around, and um, you can also Mod Podge this when you're finished so that um, it stays nice and sturdy, okay? So that's how you do that. Now, once you trim these, you have a lot of these leftover little pieces. So I'm just going to show you something you can do with all those leftover pieces. Um, remember I told you to save your cereal box. Okay. So what you can do is you can make a shape. This place is getting crowded. Or a letter. Um, I'm just going to do a really quick shape here. I'm going to make a heart that ends on this fold. Okay. 
this is I'm doing this really really fast and you want to cut I'm gonna cut it around like right here I want it to be a little bit sticking out of the edge okay so I'll cut my shape but I definitely want it to be I don't want to cut that line there because I, I need that so that I can make this stand up. I'm sorry, friends, I'm hurrying because I know my time is limited here. Okay, and then I'm going to fold this back. Okay, and then... And then it will stand. It will, trust me. Okay, and then what you can do is all these little extra pieces you can glue on your heart and then you can or whatever shape you make and then when you're done you can trim them off like if I was going to glue this on I would make it a little bit smaller and then you can glue all the way up and let me show you what it looks like I made I started to make one with my leftovers so I started to make the letter A so it looks like that and it will stand Okay. Of course, I was going to spell the word art, so that's why I started with my letter A. So this is just a way to use your scraps up. If you, you know, you spend a long time rolling these things and you've got these little scraps laying around, you can use them to make this. All right, last but not least, we have our lid here. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. of my handle, put it on my lid, and then I have a handle, and I would put some more Mod Podge on that to keep that going, and that's it. So then I'll have a pot with a lid. All right, friends, this was such a fun project. I hope you had fun with it, and I hope you get to make yourself a bowl, and I miss you so much, and I will... See you soon, I hope. Bye-bye.